Hi, I'm Jerry Boyer. This is the Eagle Investing Network. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe. Well, the uh, Congressional Budget Office uh, has released its recent forecast about debt um, and economic growth and deficits and inflation and interest rates. Why should I care about interest rates? Oh my, interest rates are maybe the single most important price in the economy. They don't just determine the return that you get on bonds. Uh, they also determine the valuation of stocks. Um, that's how stock valuation works. You discount using an interest rate the future expected earnings. Oh, Jerry, that sounds like finance and math. Yes, but it's easy finance and math. You just have to apply yourself. I'm never going to take the math beyond Algebra 1, which for most people is sixth grade. And I'll give you a refresher. We're not going to do the dividend get discount model quite yet, but it's important and it explains almost everything that's going on in markets now as interest rates are rising and stocks are collapsing. And the stocks that are most future-oriented, growth stocks, where you're expecting benefits a long time from now, they're collapsing more because you're discounting over more expected years. And that's about interest rates. Interest rates are the thermostat of the economy and the markets. And if that's a little technical, I'm sorry, life is a little complicated, but it's worth learning it in order to become a better investor. All right, um, and I would say the same thing for the government. Now the government is showing interest rates. Uh, this is the 10-year treasury, 10-year treasury bond. This is, what's a treasury bond? Well, we, can, we can go super basic. When the government borrows money from, usually from the general public, uh, or from foreign countries, and a lot of it's from foreign countries, and our own central bank, but from, from whoever. When the government borrows money, that's called a bond. It's called a treasury bond. Sometimes they borrow money for three months, and in some cases they borrow money for 10 years. So this is the 10-year treasury bond, and this is the interest on that bond. So when you buy a bond for a certain price, and then you get a fixed interest payment for that price. You just, that interest payment divided by what you paid for it is the yield. Um, and that's what we have here. That's your return on your investment. So 10-year bonds, um, 2002, 10-year bonds, if we see over time, they're, they're tending to be low. By the way, the historic average for 10-year bonds is about here over the long term. So all of this really from 2002 forward is all low. And in some cases, some of the lowest in 100 years or 500 years, if you look at global markets, really low treasury bond yields, really low borrowing costs, really puffed up stock valuations. And of course, when you do that, that's largely being done by the central bank creating money out of thin air. That's called fiat money. Fiat means let there be, you know, like in the Bible, let there be light. They say, let there be money. And then they use that money to buy the treasury bonds and pour that money into the treasury bond market. And that pushes down the interest rates. Uh, now there's been some normalization lately and we've gone crazy. Are we gonna have a recession? Markets are collapsing. Look, nowhere near the historic average. Nowhere near even recent averages. And we're already really having trouble with this. Um, so that suggests it's going to be very hard for the federal government, uh, the central bank, to raise interest rates without triggering a recession. And do they want a recession? But if they don't raise interest rates, that causes inflation. Look, we dropped them a lot and we've got terrible inflation now. So they've got a conundrum. So they're assuming that interest rates will never go really much above 4%. They're assuming that for 10 years, interest rates will not return to normal. So all of those deficit um, numbers that we've looked at and those debt numbers, and remember how the interest portion of the deficit is scheduled to grow? Well, that's under the assumption that interest rates never return to normal. That's a pretty rosy scenario. What if interest rates went up to 5 or 6 or 7%? Sometimes they've been in double digits after inflationary times. What if that happened? Well, all of those budget deficit and, and uh, national debt numbers get a lot worse. All right, well, let's say they continue to keep interest rates artificially low. Okay, that means the money spigot is open and inflation is not done away with. 
They've really got a tough choice. There's no easy way out of this. They allow interest rates to return to the natural level. They stop pumping money into the system, recession and bad stock market uh, performance. Or they keep the money spigot open uh, and that keeps the deficit and debt somewhat under control, but it keeps the inflation going. So it's looking to me like maybe not just now, but over the foreseeable future, uh, our policymakers will probably have to make a choice between muddling through with a low growth and above average inflation, uh, that's called stagflation, or killing inflation like we did in the early 80s with high interest rates, that's a deep recession, or keeping things easy going like we did in the 1970s, and that's a high rate of inflation. I don't really see a scenario other than those three scenarios, unless there's some kind of miraculous technological invention or, um, you know, people come out of come back into the labor force, um, you know, they leave retirement. Or I don't know what would happen to save us from this demographic scenario, um, from this debt scenario. So I'm not saying it's just now, but it's something to take account of. So when you see forecasts about growth or the deficit or the debts by the government, understand that they've got a rosy scenario when it comes to interest rates. They're assuming that interest rates do not return to normal. Um, if interest rates do return to normal, that's trouble in lots of different ways. But if they don't return to normal, if they're kept artificially low, well, that's a different set of troubles. That's inflation. I guess I'm repeating myself, but it's worth driving home this point and something you need to know about as an investor when you're you know, making decisions about how much to invest in the United States versus other places, how much to invest in inflation hedges versus, versus stocks, how much to invest in growth stocks, interest rate sensitive versus value stocks, not as interest rate sensitive. And that's why we have the Eagle Invest in the Eagle Investing Network to help you make those decisions in a way with your eyes wide open, aware of the risks, not panicky, but informed. I'm Jerry Boyer. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe.